This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Salute to Idaho, to Wheaton College. Not so much. This is Wretched Radio. If you have not been taken up, peek at what's going on at a lot of formerly great evangelical universities and seminaries around the country. There's been a whole lot of drifting going on. They've changed. And to assume that they continue to be biblical, have a high view of the word, is simply not wise in this day and age. There are some that are fighting like a nobody's business to remain biblical. Many are drifting, and I hold in my never-before nicotine-stained fingers an example of that. Idaho bans critical race theory from being taught in public schools, including universities. (laughs) Idaho recognizing what actually used to be an executive order that this CRT business should not be taught in government institutions now has made its way to Idaho where the legislation, House Bill 377, forbids public schools and universities from teaching that any sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin is inherently superior or inferior. That's fine. We amen that. It also bars teaching that individuals, by virtue of sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin, are inherently responsible for actions committed in the past by other members of the same sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, or national origin. That's critical theory right there. In other words, you do not have to pay for the sins of your great-great-great-great-grandparents. This is Ezekiel 18. You pay for your sins, your pop pays for his sins, and the twain shall never meet. Unless you've inherited your pop's sinful proclivities and you're acting on them. And then you're not paying for your pop's sins. You're paying for yours that your father also committed. CRT says, no, you have to pay for past reparations of things that were done by others to a group of people because of their skin color. Now, Many people are starting to forward what that looks like. And you will notice it looks like only one thing. And that's it. The call for reparations includes there's got to be some. Natural question is, what you talking about? Answer, we'll figure that out. Sorry. that's That's not the way deals are struck. What are the terms of this? How do we figure it out? What's the math? But more and more evangelicals are trying to make the case for biblical reparations. The state of Idaho is saying, uh, sorry, no. CRT, out. From Sojourners Magazine. That's right. Not the biblical kind of sojourner. We're talking about the liberal type of sojourner. Extremely liberal type of sojourner headline why nathan i hope i say this right cartagena teaches critical race theory to evangelicals at wheaton college what what there is a professor who is very vocally teaching the kids to embrace critical race theory at wheaton college What in the world is going on there? The article is, it's truly fascinating because this is is what cannot be missed. When people embrace CRT, you might think about it and just go, "Ah, it's just so, it just, it isn't even logical. It isn't even reasonable, let alone biblical. But these aren't knuckleheads. These are smart people. They're just wrong. And that's what this article reveals. There has been a lot put into CRT, a lot. And there are more books that are being written that are cited as sources of authority. Like you and I would say, well, let's go read what, fill in the blank. Let's go read what Thomas Watson said. Let's go read some J.C. Ryle. They now are citing other books that were written within the last couple of decades to go see right there. It's quoted right there in that book. So there is much behind what is being presented as CRT, but I was a little bit shocked to hear that it was being taught at Wheaton College and um, 
What that looks like from the article, I taught a reading group my first year at Wheaton that involved one of the important texts in the critical race theory movement. Faces at the Bottom of the Well by Derek Bell. Remember that name. He is one of the CRT leaders. The following year, I asked if I could teach a half-semester class on critical race theory. I got a full thumbs up from Wheaton College. You know some good men who have graduated from Wheaton College. They're older now. But this used to be a stellar evangelical university. You probably wouldn't agree with every one of their angles, but it would be reliable and you'd say, well, I can send my child there. He got a full thumbs up. More. I thought about how cool it would be to have resources to answer this question. Here's the question. What does sanctification look like in a racialized world? So a racialized world is one that is filled with racial tensions, animosity, one-upsmanship, oppressor, oppressed. He then said this, Paul doesn't inhabit a racialized world. Jesus doesn't inhabit a racialized world. After the 15th century, people are inhabiting a racialized world. Uh, (laughs) cereal? (laughs) Really? There were, ironically enough, sojourners in Israel. There were foreigners. They would make their way through, and they could be welcomed in, by the way. Furthermore, when Jesus lived, was the world racialized? Oh, yeah, Jew and Gentile. It was a war deluxe. It Honestly, it makes black and white 21st century America, well, the animosity they want us to have toward one another, look like child's play. To state that Jesus didn't get that. And so CRT needs to help us understand. That's why it's a helpful analytical tool. Because the Bible is kind of stuck in a time period. Didn't imagine that we'd be living in a racialized world. Wheaton College. Back to the article. One of the things I do is present CRT literature without telling students that it's CRT literature. So read this book, and then he asks people what they think. It was pretty good. I learned some stuff. Then he informs them, ha ha, it's CRT. He said this in the interview in Sojourner's Magazine. It's a healthy destabilization. Oh, I see. Thank you for your honesty. This professor is taking evangelical kids who are going to an evangelical school and destabilizing them. He feels that's his mission, and it's being embraced wholeheartedly at Wheaton. I wonder how many parents are aware of that. By the way, this is going on constantly in so many schools. No, every university, this is happening, and in most Christian schools, and I say most because it's most. Destabilization. I think it's a healthy destabilization. You've got to remember that a lot of my students are racialized white folks. Huh. That right. So we are racialized. I don't know if that means racist, but apparently racialized, that we put ourselves in a class that we feel is superior because we think that we're better than you simply because of our skin color. Uh Uh-huh. And he feels then, therefore, that he's got to take these poor racialized, dare I say, racist kids and destabilize them. Well, isn't that Gnostic of him? Isn't that nice to know that he knows what's in the heart of all of his students? From the article, this is one of the really important challenges I face as a teacher in historically white evangelical spaces. (laughs) How do I remove false ideas and help people to grow in justice, mercy, and understanding regarding CRT and regarding communities that they've come from where they've, where they've slandered CRT folks? It's so much harder than it was a year ago because the stakes are high. How do you do the good anti-hegemonic work? In other words, tear down the hegemony that you reveal that it's the people in power are controlling everything. That's filled with love of neighbor while also knowing that as you help to move people out of what I call the platonic racialized cave, it's going to hurt. Well, thank you for sharing that, Wheaton professor. 
For the most part, he writes, explicit promotions of a holistic vision of white supremacy start to decline after 1965. Before that, you get all sorts of discourses that are explicit about white supremacy. Many different con uh, conceptions of whiteness. Sometimes people are defending Anglo-Saxon white supremacy. But it's explicit. You get Rudyard Kipling talking about the white man's burden for them. This was all benevolent racism. Oh, these poor, weaker races, they really need us. What is he revealing? That you can't look at a culture that is not very civilized and say that they could use some help. You can't do that because it automatically means that you are superior and you are racist. That's Gnosticism. Maybe these people actually genuinely cared and they had a wit of common sense to recognize uh, people who are eating each other, they probably need a little help. That doesn't make you racist. It makes you kind. Did I mention this is from a professor at Wheaton College? This is Wretched Radio. Um, Houston, I think we have a few problems here. Go ahead, Wretched One. Besides the fact I'm wearing a cardboard helmet, Houston, you have got one of the biggest false teachers in the universe. <laughs> Are you kidding? He is so rich. Uh, how rich is he, wretched one? <laughs> I can see his house from here. 